This is a Bianchi Altair XR4. It's the rim brake version, but while everyone's getting really excited by the current weirdness of whatever the new Bianchi uh, aero bike is with all the fins and the controversy and stuff, I thought we need to look at this bike because this was, still is, an absolutely fantastic bike. Those two bikes in the Bianchi range, the XR4 and the Specialisma, which are like a step above everything else that Bianchi do. And I think this one kind of gets overlooked and I'm not sure why, because I had the pleasure of riding one for a couple of days, actually a few years ago, and I was, I was blown away by it. It was actually a really, really special bike. Now the aero stuff aside, I'm not an aero expert. It definitely just felt fast and it felt fast because the handling was really secure. And that's what really struck to me was not so much in a straight line, but it felt like you could really hold that speed through corners and obstacles and that sort of thing because the bike just felt so confident. And for me, that was what makes a fast bike is that if you've got the confidence to ride at that speed, then you will ride at that speed. Whenever, sometimes bikes are, you know, very, very aero, but they just don't install that confidence in the rider. And when I rode this, I was just like, yeah, this is a really good, confident handling bike. And um, I actually rode it with a set of eight um, zip 858s as well, really, really deep sections on some really mad crosswinds. And it was just, it was just superb. So um, the build quality on these is actually very good. Now, I can't say that blanket across all Bianchi stuff because there's definitely some lemons in their range. But uh, the Altair XR4s and the Specialismas that I've had have always been very, very good. I've always been very impressed. The inside of the carbon all looks clean. The bottom brackets have been good. The headsets have always been really nicely made as well. And they always think about sort of how the cable routine is, is all going to work. So, you know, before we get too carried away by, you know, the latest and greatest, there's stuff like this out here which is just fantastic. Um, and probably coming up in the second-hand market right now. Now, the other thing I want to pay homage to is that this has the Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 11-speed. Now, I'm going to put it to you that this is probably the best group set ever made in terms of reliability, cost, performance, weight. I think that this is right up there. I love the, the, uh, the design of the levers, the crank set. Yes, we know they have some problems, but I would struggle to think of an alternative at that sort of price point that still had the stiffness and the weight that these, that these have. It'd be, it'd be hard. You'd be spending a lot, a lot of money to try and find something better. The gear shifting performance of the Dura Ace was always exceptional, especially when you keep to that Dura Ace cassette, Dura Ace chain, Dura Ace chain rings. If you had all of that lined up, the shifting is always exquisite. And I think this 11 speed was probably, you know, one of the best they ever made. I'm really not a massive fan of the 12 speed. Maybe time for another video. There we go, waxing miracle about just a fantastic bike that is, you might consider has had its time, but I think far from it. I think this bike is of its time. It is lovely light, it's aero enough. It's beautifully well made. What's not to like? Now. To finish this video off, I'm just going to, I've done some clips in the workshop of how we tidied this cable routed up. Look as neat and as smart as this. So if you're interested, there's a bit of rough and ready footage coming up showing you how we did that. Right now we've got this gorgeous Biaggi Altair XR4 in the service, but all these DI2 cables are really letting it down with all this extra cable. So. Our job today is to tidy this all up and make this look as sleek as the rest of the bike is. Okay. So the plan is this little uh, Bluetooth cable connector thing here, which is awesome if you're shipping bikes and you just want to hold the handlebars to one side, but it really gets in the way. We're going to try and hide this up in the handlebars and run some heat shrink around this rear brake hose. So you're just going to see two cables there and then we're going to try and connect that front brake and the rear brake together so we're going to have one nice smooth line right we need to start taking this bar tape off first so i've got all the bar tape off now and pulled all the cables out we've also got rid of all the brake cables as well so we can see what's going on and 
really, really good news is that there is loads and loads of excess cable that comes up from the junction box, which is going to give us loads to play with, which is awesome news. So because we're here in the UK and we run our brake the wrong way around, we're actually going to run this brake over to this side here. And this is going to be wrapped up in heat shrink and go to the left hand shifter all in one nice continuous run. And then with the other Y cable that is applied and the wireless junction here, we're actually going to hide all of this inside the bar and run the little charging port here. We're actually going to put this down here on the left hand side shifter. That way everything should be kept completely internal, should look mega smart. I've done all of the internal cable routing now. I'm just going to try and show you what I've actually done. So first of all, got that big long cable coming from the frame, got some heat shrink on there already, ready for the rear brake to go through with it. And then that leads straight into the left hand shifter. From the left hand shifter, we have that Y piece and that Y piece actually runs um, through here. You can just see that's the little part of the Y piece there. We're going to bury that back into the handlebar. This, this is the little DI2 uh, wireless unit. And that is just going to sit up here in that little recess with a little bit of double sided tape. Oh, look dead smart. And then down here, we've just got the little um, control unit and charging port. And we just blanked off one of those holes. We only need one of those holes. That's going to go in the end of the handlebar. Yeah, that's it. So now I'm going to run those brake, brake lines and tidy it all up. Now, what I've done here, you can see we've got the brake line in place, that heat shrink just over the top there. All of those cables on the inside. So we're going to have enough there to make sure there's enough slack so that when the rider is riding, that we're not going to be like pulling the cables out. So you need to make sure there's like a good sort of thumb worth of slack on both sides. I see I'm just going to tape all this down now, uh, make it all nice and neat, put that heat gun onto that heat shrink and yeah, we're good to go.